No, no, what happened to the wheels? Well, hey, y'all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. It's been a rainy week and I just haven't been able to do a whole lot with my camera this week because this old hurricane's been passing through and all that. But I have some very amazing news concerning my old Range Rover Classic, the original Rover Rescue vehicle. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that my subset is Rover Rescue. And that started with three Range Rover Classics that we pulled out of a field behind a storage unit about a year and a half ago. And I will link to that first video up here so y'all can check that out if you haven't already. I was, it's been an amazing experience. I did a lot of work with mine. I did an off-road event with the Rovers Own, Overs, uh, Rover Owners Association of Virginia. And I went to the Outer Banks in it. It just needed more work than I think I had the capability of doing in my own driveway and garage. So when the opportunity came to get this LR3 or Disco 3, I ended up swapping it to the buddy who purchased this, doing some work on this, and, and this has become, quite frankly, especially in inclement weather, my daily driver. It's been what I wanted that classic to become for me. It just didn't get quite there. It drove okay, and I certainly took trips in it, but it wasn't where it should be. And this is, and I, I actually really love this vehicle. I have enjoyed, I've put almost 3,000 miles on this since late August even though my real daily driver is a, sitting over here is a BMW i3 electric car. So, and this takes premium. All that to say, that person, a friend of mine who also uh, has been in many of my Rover Rescue videos, ended up being able to get a 109 uh, Defender from the early 80s and needed to get rid of the Classic to help pay for it. So of course, why not? And he did, and he sold to someone else who has an NAS Defender 90, and this guy, has done some amazing things to it. Let's take a look at the first picture I was sent. I don't know this person. I'm hoping that I can meet this guy when it's done and take a look at it, maybe drive it again. So here's the first picture and, oh no, what happened to the wheels? Oh, and the chassis's gone. Oh yeah, uh, so, so it looks like on this lift that he has, which I don't have access to a four post lift in my garage. I have friends who have them, but my one's a working shop and I can't obviously take advantage of that. I don't think. So yeah, so obviously the, the body's come off, which is just amazing. Uh, the body on this had one little tiny bit of rust kind of in the, the B column at the bottom on the passenger side. Other than that, no rust on it whatsoever. Some surface rust, but that was really it. It had really nice patina. The clear coat had cracked off on most of the panels. So it was kind of uh, almost like what you'd get now in a, like a charcoal wrap that was a matte finish, except it was originally beluga black and it did have the tan interior like this, a little bit darker, which was in pretty good shape. There was one split seam on the driver's seat. The wood trim had really just gone in, in bad way because it was sitting out in the sun for so long. But otherwise the carpeting was okay. Um, most of the dash was uncracked. So yeah, so this, this body may stay this way. Again, I don't know the guy. I don't know what ideas he has. What I do know is if I go to the next picture now, there's the chassis. So, you know, it, it it's it's a rolling frame, obviously. Uh, I did the old man, or I, I had the old man emu suspension installed because it had air suspension. And of course that was totally collapsed. Didn't feel like rebuilding that system. The compressor never worked as far as I know. We, uh, we tried jumping it and all that stuff, nothing. I will say looking at this, you see that the driver's side front wheel is off. The uh, braking system looks like it's been redone, which is great. Um, I had redone the power steering system and a few other things, cooling system basically, except for the radiator, the hoses and all that. But I hadn't touched the braking system. Uh, the rotors cleaned up really well and it stopped really well. But on my list to do was the hoses because they were old. And the problem with the ABS system on, on that 94 was it was like a one or two year only system. It was incredibly complicated, unnecessarily so and bleeding the system is apparently an absolute nightmare. So that never happened in my ownership. Again, I probably only drove it about 1200 miles from when it was reconditioned to put back on the road, <laughs> barely, to when I sold it. And there were two trips in there, um, both of which were kind of white knuckled on the highway for a little while, but uh, it, it always stopped really, really well, I will say. Uh, and I know when uh, Tyler, who's one of the mechanics who worked on it, had it up on the lift and we were looking underneath and he said, someone really cared for this vehicle. Uh, the pieces had been replaced. Uh, they were newer when the vehicle was 
gotten rid of and then kind of put in that storage facility along with the other two, which were in much worse shape. And, um, both of which are, are back on the road though. So that's a fantastic result. We got three of them out of a field. All three are, are drivable. And now the final picture is obviously the engine was taken out along with the transmission and the, uh, the gearbox for the four wheel drive system. Now it ran fine. It might've been a little low on power, but I think it was, you know, it, it, it would do 70 on the highway without really being a, a big deal. It had a really bad exhaust leak and the everything, everything I tracked it down to was that one of the exhaust manifolds just was not sealing properly at all. And so that needed to be replaced. And those are not the easiest to find on a, on the 4.2. So I just never got around to doing that. So it was, it was loud. It sounded like, uh, you know, a 73 Camaro 350 with glass packs, which isn't really what you want to do when you started up first thing in the morning to go pick up breakfast when, you know, it's next to your neighbor's bedroom window and, uh, it's six 30 in the morning. Cause I usually go to work before seven. So yeah, so that, that kind of, uh, yeah, was something that needed to be done. Obviously much easier to do now that it's out of the vehicle. It's obviously been cleaned up just like that frame looks like was cleaned up and coated in some kind of black matte finish, satin finish paint. Again, completely rust free underneath. There was no rust on the frame whatsoever. It still had some of the original coating on it. Actually, most of it. One of the best I've ever seen. Also keep in mind, this vehicle had something like 205,000 miles on it. So as far as I know, that's the original engine and transmission. The transmission shifted pretty well. So, uh, you know, and, and I had checked the fluid and it was cherry red on the dipstick. So it, it must have been changed shortly before it was put out of service, so to speak. Uh, I never did anything to the transmission, never had any need to. Certainly changed the oil a couple of times. Um, air conditioning obviously was no longer functional. So that's something that hopefully this person's taken care of. That's something that I would have done at some point just because... Uh, you know, I mean, it has it. That vehicle, by the way, as a 94 County LWB was top of the line, top of the range. I know they have a different name in, in the UK, uh, HSE or something like that. But in the US, they were County LWBs, had heated seats, CD changer, everything you could possibly imagine to cram into a vehicle that had been designed 25 years earlier. And it was the last model year before the soft dash in 95. So it had everything that they could put on it, throw on it, because by 1994, it was a really out of date vehicle and there were so many good luxury SUVs coming to market. And of course, then they did the one year only soft dash, which had dual climate control and things like that, that, uh, and airbags, which of course, you know, wouldn't even dreamed of in 1970, except maybe by GM. Cause I know in the early seventies, GM made a couple of cars with airbags like Cadillacs and stuff like that. So I am thrilled to see these images. I knew it was going to good home, even if Mike kept it, he was going to do some good work to it. And he has a bigger garage than I do, uh, and more space to do things like that. But, uh, this is just, I'm over the moon to see this thing getting basically restored. And I'm, I'm hopeful that I can get in touch with the, the current owner. I believe he is here in the city I live in and, uh, maybe see what it's like now during this process or later on when it's done and road ready, because I would love to be able to drive this again when it's quiet, when, uh, the air conditioning works when the driver's side power window works that I tried fixing, but never got around to really doing and all these other things that looks like are being taken care of to take this to the next level. I would not be surprised if this thing goes on cars and bids in, you know, six months for 30 grand. I actually tried to put it on cars and bids when they first opened the site. The first 100 people got like 500 bucks or something to list their car on there if it was accepted. And, you know, I said, YouTube history pulled out of a field. Here's all these pictures running and driving, done an off-road competition with rock crawling. And I was declined. So anyway, that's fine because I ended up with this LR3 that I am really enjoying. And quite frankly, if something bad happens to this one, I might get another one. So here we are, Rover Rescue, always a surprise. I love bringing this content, even with all the other things I do, and I'm going to keep doing that. So I hope you've enjoyed this little update. It actually went way longer than I thought it would, because I like to run my mouth. So stay tuned for more Rover Rescue. Let's see if we can find this, take a drive in it someday, and all the other fun content I'm bringing. Please make sure to hit subscribe if you're not already, because that helps me. Hey, maybe someday I can afford a garage with a lift like this. So uh, yeah, hit subscribe, keep watching these videos, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day.